This show contains adult content. Just want to give a warm thank you to Ariel Weiss, Double Up Omega, Historian of Nukes, Suzanne Hagen, and T, along with all of our other patrons for supporting us. You can find our Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash sounds like crows. Savage Worlds and Deadlands Reloaded are owned by the Pinnacle Entertainment Group. All music on the show is written and performed by Rudy Zuniga or Levi Rojas. With all that out of the way, welcome back to the Weird West. The Crow Boys in the stone cells wake in the morning to the sound of a bell being rung. As your eyes glance up towards the people around you, you know, Old Boots stretching, he looks confused as he gets up. But many of the people in this room stand up, uh, many of them are joking and laughing with one another, and they're starting to line up in front of the iron door that leads out of your cell. Abel moves with a groan and then reaches up to peel away the blanket that he was laying on that's been like dried to the blood on the back of his head from the wounds there and winces uh, as he rips it away. Blood starts to flow again uh, and he rolls over to his knees and then slowly pushes himself up to his, up to his feet and looks around. Thaddeus. Hey, Thaddeus. Oh, what? Where are you? <laughs> And Thaddeus is sort of wincing and sort of rubbing the, the sleep out of his eyes as he sits up in the corner of the room. I'm over here. Hey, hey, this way. Yeah, yeah. Abel stumbles through the room, just knocking a few people out of the way as he goes, and then leans heavily against the wall, looking down at Thaddeus. You see, all this is ridiculous. Hey, hey, where are you folks going? There's a woman who's about 5'3 in line. She looks pretty built, pretty strong. She's not wearing any iron chains or anything. She's got a simple button-up shirt and brown trousers. She turns to you with sort of this loose hair and says, Oh, it's it's Sunday. That he sort of looks back at her like... Uh, yeah, sorry, you must be new. Um, it's the It's the day of the Lord. It's a rest day. Don't really have to do anything today. The meals are better than normal, and uh, even get to hear the father talk for a while. The father? You mean, you mean the old man from yesterday? Uh, if you mean Father Jeremiah, yeah. So we're just not gonna, we're just not gonna address what happened then. You and many other people in here may have tried to escape, but I've seen at least a dozen of those attempts, and none of them have gone well. Life's not bad here. Yes, I'm just going to ignore it. If you listen to the teachings and try to understand what they're talking about, I mean, this is a pretty good life for California. I've never gone hungry here, unlike Lost Angels and wherever else you want to head out west. Harper. Abel just cuts her off. Harper. The camera cuts over to Harper. He's he's sitting on the ground uh, with his back up against the wall. He's unbuttoned his shirt. He's just sitting there. He hasn't been awake for long, but he is still, you know, starting to stir. You can see just the shattered remains of his rib cage at this point. Like everything is just blue and purple and green. His face is similarly colored uh, and he's just sitting there. He is covered in yesterday's dried blood and he's just like looking around the room kind of in a daze. Yeah. What? Just making sure you're awake. Yeah, I wish, uh, I wish I wasn't. <laughs> I'm with you there. That is, let's get him up. At least we can get some grub. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, little brother, I got you. Oh, Come on. fuck. There we go. Uh, shit, anybody seen Lucky? Jail cell opens and people start to move in an orderly fashion. Your cell is near the back of the living quarters, so you're one of the last groups to arrive in the main cavern. Uh, looks a lot different in the daytime. That crack in the top is just spilling in this beautiful natural light. 
Uh, there's like some birds chirping in here early in the morning. This beautiful golden light is reflecting off the walls. And um, there have been some tables set up, but mostly it's a lot of those crates and barrels have been moved around to make this makeshift dining area. Both of those Gatling turrets have been moved slightly. One of them uh, sort of sits near the, the dock, but still adjacent to your side. And then one of them has been moved uh, a little bit up on the hill. Um, and you can see that it is, in fact, uh, on a wagon this time that's sort of chalked on the hill. And there are members of the upright gang milling around the perimeter of people eating, but it looks like they're all pretty loose. Um, and many of them are interacting with with people eating people are lining up where a collection of folks that don't look like they're carrying weapons at all are smiling handing out uh, bowls of soup to anyone that makes the line abel and i are still like shackled up right i think your hands are yes you can see probably about 10 percent of the people in here are wearing shackles well i think there's probably just a a general shot of thaddeus in line he's Probably got his hands up in his face, sort of rubbing at the scar on the left side of his head a little bit as he's sort of waking up in the morning. Doesn't seem like they've got any coffee. There's just a soup. Yes. Oh, man. Yeah. Oh, boy. The caffeine withdrawals. That's rough. So, yeah, he's he's slowly ambling up there and grabbing the bowl of soup. That's what Thaddeus is worried about? <laughs> that's what Thaddeus is worried about? Yeah, he's, he's a soup. Oh, man. it's really rough without coffee this morning, huh, boys? <laughs> You can see Thaddeus up in the front of the line. Uh, the line gets cut. It gets stopped. Uh, no one really seems to mind, though, as you peer around. Uh, sort of a gruff-looking member of the Upright Gang comes up and exchanges smiles and exchanges small talk with the person handing out soup. He's given a bowl of soup. He nods his head, um, says something to the effect of bless you, and then moves away with that bowl to a table where you see your brother Lucky sitting. And he puts down the bowl in front of Lucky. Oh, weird. Lucky, you were escorted here by um, the same two men that captured you last night. They were much nicer with you this morning. They took your manacles off. Uh, they offered you a bath, which you refused. And then uh, you were brought here. Mondrayon also came with you, although he pointedly has not spoken to you. And he's sitting at one of the tables uh, nearby you. Uh, with a bowl of soup that he's not eating. And a bowl of soup was just put in front of me? Yep. Uh, look, he's going to scarf that shit down. Yeah, you start to scarf it down, and you look up and make eye contact with your brother Thaddeus. Can I just go over to him? Yeah, if you want, yeah. Uh, there's sort of a big perimeter of these guards, and a few of them are milling in, you know, checking on conversations, making sure no one's, like, making weapons or anything. But for the most part within this dining area, um, all of the congregation is allowed to commune freely hmm. well that's not good because Mondragon's right there I mean he doesn't have a weapon and you know his throat was cut out so <laughs> you trying to say he's not a threat I mean he has three wounds he might so. be. I'll he fucking beat him to death with one arm dude bring it on I would like to see ten rounds of crows and Mondragon's <laughs> <laughs> rolling negative numbers at each other <laughs> uh well, I guess Lucky's just going to get up and go over to Thaddeus. Oh, oh hey, Lucky, what the, what the hell? Where you been? Yeah, I don't, I don't fucking even know. I got pulled to this real fancy sort of cell area, but wait, have I seen anyone? You what? Uh, was it just like I was just there overnight? Yeah, uh, you were just there overnight, but yeah, it's, it's clear you're being kept there, and there's some other well-fed prisoners there as well. Guess I'm getting the... Uh, the VIP treatment somehow in this piece of shit place. Wait, 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 wait. Didn't you shoot that old man yesterday? I shot him yesterday and I shot him in the past too. <laughs> oh, you shot him before, have you? That is. This is that guy. This is that guy. I, you never told me. I don't I don't know anything that's going on around here. That's not the goal of kid. That was that other guy from before, right? So who's the old man? I'll tell you what. Go grab a bowl, let's get everyone together, and I'll just tell you guys the whole story. Yeah, well, I thought they stole my uh, my servant, but I guess they were just bringing it to you, so... Yeah, no, uh, a Abel and I think Daisy are sitting up over there at that table, you see him? Yeah, that's actually a good idea, let's go sit at that table. Yeah, yeah. We got a unpleasant, familiar company over there, as he kind of nods towards Mondragon. 
No, oh my God, he yeah. survived. Yeah, don't make eye contact. Let's just get the fuck out of here. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. And Thaddeus turns back around and tries to get a hold of his soup and definitely pointedly does not make any attempts to draw attention to Mondrian. Abel and Harper, you guys are sitting at the same table? Yeah, I think Harper has his face on the table. And as his brothers approach, he kind of slowly like stirs and lifts it. And you can just hear the the sound of steel grinding against wood as he slides just like the empty eye socket along as he kind of drags himself up to sit upright. There you go, Daisy. Hey, hey, I got you two gifts here, all right? We got you some nice hot breakfast soup. And hey, look, I found you lucky. Oh, damn. I thought they were killing you or something. I thought I was too. And yet here you are not dead. Yeah, not dead. Not dead yet anyways. Hey, guys, eat up. It's story time. Lucky explains the whole story to you. There's this montage as some acoustic guitar music twangs in the background, playing a sad accompaniment to Lucky's story. We see his lips moving, we see the saddened faces of his brothers, and we see the untouched soup in front of them. And then the camera fades to the last shot, and the audio starts to come back in over the sound of the music. But I guess on the bright side of things, that's how I met Ma, and I would have never met any of you guys otherwise. Shoot, am I happy to see you boys here. I can't hardly believe it. I didn't think you boys would make it out of that boat after I saw what those upright gang been doing to you. Oh, boy. Lucky turns with a, a fake smile on his head. Old boot! You made it. Hey, you know, old booty always makes it anywhere. I gotta come clean with you, boys. I was following that damn Montreal's. Is that how you say that, that boy's name? Anyway, I've been following you boys up in that ship, and I figured I'd sneak on through to sell this lump of scrap I got in the back of my boat. But, well, I guess them boys, they done caught me. But uh, I talked my way out of it. A boat made it safe and sound here. Well, it looks like that really worked out for you. <laughs> oh, things always turn up gravy for Old Boot. Well, Old Boot, sit down. I got a story for you. <laughs> 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 old Boot sits down. <laughs> There's again a montage. <laughs> well, on the bright side of things, that's how I met mine. Jesus Christ, that's a real <laughs> fucked up story in here, Lucky. <laughs> Holy shit. You telling that to Old Boot, that means a lot to me. You know, I trust you, Lucky, and I hope you trust the same old boot. You ever need anything, a friend of Jack is a friend of mine. Old oh, boot, get another bowl. Oh. It's story time again. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll just do that for like 25 minutes or so and call it an episode. Yeah, that's a good episode, yeah. yeah. We'll call it Soup's Up. <laughs> Soup's Up. Soup's Up. <laughs> Soup's up. <laughs> Dinner time. Will you boys cook it up some sort of escape plan or what? <laughs> well... Uh, old boot, I'm sure yeah, you were here yesterday. Oh, yeah, we, I, I done escaped with you and your brothers there, that is. Yeah, so, uh, well, you saw her plan in action. Well, this is a bad plan. <laughs> <laughs> well, old boot, if I'm honest with you, uh, I'm not sure the Crow Boys have made a good plan in the last ten years, but, uh, <laughs> hey, uh, we're survivors if we're nothing else. I hear you, dear. I've been... Sailing on my lonesome for nigh on 50 years, and that's how you gotta do it in the Californias. You just gotta keep on floating. You know, that is, I make plenty of good plans. So you speak for your, speak for your goddamn self. Make great plans. All, all right, all right, Harper. I'm just, I'm just making a point. I'm, your, your plans are fine. You got, you got one for our current situation right now? The thing about plans is you gotta think about it for a minute. You don't just go with the first fucking thing that comes to mind. I reckon we had about 45 on our way over here. Hey, well, cool it, guys. Cool it. We're not getting out of here in this condition anyways. Lucky's right. Lucky kind of, like, looks around. I think the best course of action might be to just keep our heads down for a while and let this shit heal up. He kind of taps the side of his, his stomach. Aren't you afraid of spending a lot of time with this here father, Jeremiah? He gives him a sharp look. You don't think I'm fucking scared? Of course I'm scared. But what the hell are we going to do, old boot? 
bitch. <laughs> 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 fucking bitch. <laughs> Just the idea. <laughs> what are we going to do, old boot? <laughs> <laughs> you just heard yeah. my fucking brother who has good ideas say he can't make one. What do you got, old man? Sit your ass down, old boot. It's story time. <laughs> I'm telling again. I'm telling the whole story again. <laughs> <laughs> With more emphasis on every yeah. detail. Oh, man. But on the bright side, that's how I met Ma, and I would have never met any of you guys. Especially you, old boot. The cola kid clears his throat from uh, up on the hill. He's almost standing in the tree. You see him standing on the hill and the looming figure of the blooming tree behind him as he shouts out to the crowd. Children, if you are nearing completion with your substance for today, please come. Come and listen to the words of our father as he teaches us the way towards a new life. Towards being reborn. Come, everyone. There is plenty for all. Some people start to scarf down their soup and start to move up the hill, but everyone starts to move that way. And the guards that are surrounding the dining area subtly start to move their perimeter, corralling people that way. Well, looks like we're going to church, boys. Better be some goddamn wine then. Amen. Mm, let's just get this over with. We cut to a different angle as the congregation is moving towards this tree and sitting in these pews. And we see the back of Ellis's head as he's peeking over the edge, looking down on the commotion below. So what's the plan here, Way? I haven't seen any boats leave yet, have you? Nah, it looks like they're having some sort of service down there. Well, we wouldn't want to interrupt God's work, would we? No, I wouldn't. Lots of men down there right now. Yeah, fair too many. That's the most meat I've had in ages. I think we could survive for a little while if you just want to watch. Yeah, but what's like the uh, the long-term plan? We can't just take them out one by one until there's none left. There's no way they support that many people growing those little plants in that garden down there. They've got to be importing food from somewhere. You really think we can take on a whole ship full of these soldiers? We don't have to breathe, Elijah. You can get underneath any boat and slip through the hole without anyone noticing. Once we're in the hole, well, that's close quarters. Ain't a lot of chance for those boys to sneak up on us. Just flesh on flesh. Doesn't matter if there's 20 boys in a boat if they come at us two by two. I mean, that sounds like a good plan, but I have a feeling we're just going to be doing that for years. How many people you think they got down there? Hundreds. And they got some heavy artillery, too. You ever serve in a war? No. Have you? I never did, no. I never thought the colonies would make it. We kill a few boats, bringing in food, and people start to panic. They send a few boats out to get food to stop their little mortal selves from starving, and well, we eat them, too. We leave their bodies on every canyon leaving this place. Give it three weeks. All those prisoners in there when their tummies are grumbling. They're gonna need something to fill it. Flesh or otherwise. Yeah, I don't want them eating my brothers. The whole point is to save them. Hmm. I got an idea. It's a little crazy. I don't know if it's gonna work. I love it already. The Crow Brothers down below uh, sit in a pew, presumably near the back of the congregation, as people settle in. The Wispy Father, whose undead features are only exaggerated by the daylight spilling down on him, stands behind the pulpit, a Bible in his hands. Children, I bless you in the name of the Father above, the Father below, and the Holy Spirit. Rise and sing with me. And everyone rises from their pews. And uh, some of them uh, have hymnals already with them. He says to turn to page 293. Everyone does so. And they start to sing. I don't think it's necessary to say, but I don't think any of the Crow Brothers rise up. I think we can fade through the sermon. It's things many of you have heard before in your life with an undertone of respect authority. And the body of Christ plays another prominent role. 
As the sermon finishes up, the Cola Kid rises from one of the front pews and comes to join the father behind the pulpit. Now is the time, brothers and sisters, if you wish to be reborn, if you believe you are ready, if you believe God has spoken to you and you know in your heart that the only way forward is through his holy light, rise and join us. One person slowly rises from their pew. It's a man in his 50s, gray, long hair. He's slightly hunched over. He's got a worn brown shirt on and old mining boots just over long johns. He moves out into the, c- the center aisle and there's an uneasy silence as he stands there and shambles up front. As he comes up on stage, the Kola kid takes him by both of his shoulders and looks him square in the eyes. Are you ready? To see our father above the man nods and uh you can see like a tear streaming down his face and then uh the cola kid immediately draws his gun twirls it around his finger puts it to the man's heart and pulls the trigger the shot rings out through the canyon and the crowd starts to cheer people clap and uh there's a few hallelujahs in the crowd it is time everyone let us bury our brother, that he may be reborn, and let us continue the great work. And uh, people start to move uh, towards the pulpit, and the father and the cola kid start to move past the tree and into the garden, and many of the people follow them. You're sort of ushered with the crowd up past the pulpit, out of the pews, and through this garden. And you can see on the other side of this hill, the cavern kind of levels out, Uh, The garden stretches on for a while until it's met with a a strong rock face. And then uh, there are holes that are not natural. Tunnels dug in the walls by pickaxes over time and uh, like a minecart system to pull the rock and rubble out. And one side of the garden, there's a large collection of stones that have been pulled out of these tunnels. And uh, you can you can see now that there's sort of a, a trail where wagons would take them to the docks. Uh, there's guards on this side as well. And you can already hear the sounds of pickaxes as you move closer. Uh, many of the people here are sort of laughing and joking around, even the ones carrying the dead body of this man the Cola Kid just shot. Uh, They move to a section of the garden that the soil does not look as rich as perhaps most of the garden does. And they begin to dig his grave. And then uh, many of the other people move and grab some mining supplies, some pickaxes while chatting with each other and move into these tunnels to continue the work of God. Abel leans over to uh, Thaddeus in, in a low voice. I mean, if they need more volunteers to give them bodies, we can supply a few. I don't think they're going to take it that way if we say something like that. Sure, but what about spontaneous worship? <laughs> yeah, well, we're going to have to get better grasp of the situation, I think. Uh, we don't have any of our gear. We don't know where they stash it. Abel looks over to Lucky. What about you? You ain't locked up in the rocks like us. As far as I know, I don't know where the hell I'm going to stay. Okay, well, can you keep it together long enough to get information? As soon as you saw him the last time, we ended up here. Don't fucking blame me for this situation. I'm not blaming you. I'm saying, can you keep your head on straight next time? Yeah, keep my head on next time. All right. Bucky, I'm trusting you. You know more about these people than I than any of us do. So if anybody's going to get information, it's probably you. You can look around, but these people are fucking crazy. Yeah, I'll bust rocks, but lucky, we'll look to you. All right, well, just don't go killing yourselves. Oh, shit, no. No, but if I can get hands on my books and maybe a deck of cards, you know, just eyes on where our stuff's at, you know, we can take it from there. You want a steak with that tooth, that is? You know how fucking hard that's going to be, the kid? Just eyes. I don't need you to grab it. I think we just need information for now. I bet plenty of these people will talk. They seem pretty friendly, or at least complacent. Yeah, I guess, until they decide to kill themselves. Yeah, you know what that's about. I don't know, I think it looks pretty simple, right? I mean, that man's obviously whatever whatever Ellis is, right? He's got a fucking, what, a demon in his head? Spirit in his head? Yeah, and must have died if Lucky's right. Wait, what? There's more people like Ellis? I mean, there's gotta be, right? Don't make sense it would be just him. And this guy, 
I mean, he looks pretty close, right? He looks dead. He's got the gunshots that killed him. I suppose. Now, we can't have two or three different ways of people coming back from the dead, right? So we figure he's like the one we know. Are they just trying to make more? Is that what he... That's got to be what he means when he's saying reborn, right? Yeah, that's he what he kills them like. and then just what hopes they come back. The Lord above and the Lord below. There ain't no Lord below. What? It's not like you just shovel a deck of cards and you just become one of these guys. Brother, are you okay? He kind of does his best to stand up straight and cannot. He, like, looks down at, like, I think he's left his shirt open. So you can just see the purple and red and green. And he just kind of, like, looks up at him like he's an idiot. No. Brother, we must take you to see Dr. Chan. You can't be working in this condition. Come along with me. Come along with me. He'll get you fixed up. Hey, 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 hey. Now, this is my little brother here. There's no way I'm going to let him go anywhere by himself. Look at him in his condition. He will not be going by himself. He'll be accompanied by me and by the Holy Spirit. Well. And Dr. John is a very nice man. He's done things for me and many of my friends here in the congregation. I assure you, he'll take good care of your brother. Don't worry about him. Well, forgive me, but I was there when he lost that arm, and, and I just couldn't live with myself if I left him, knowing that he's in this condition. Make uh. a persuasion roll. Uh. All right, Thaddeus. Let's hey. go, baby. The thing, guys, I'm so persuasive. I think it's a four because I got that mark of fear. Okay, sure, yeah. But you're ugly. Are you? No, you I'm, actually, not, I'm not, not actually ugly. ugly. He's <laughs> okay, just, you know, yeah, okay. described as ugly. I see you must be new. And uh, he looks down at your shackles. Yeah, I thought we were getting saved from some Mexican armada, and here I am chained up harder than they were. You'll be unchained by next services. Yeah, is it going to be Sunday? Always is. The day of the Lord. Great, so I got now, a week of this. No, on, no, it's fine. Come it's along. Fine. Your I'm brother coming. doesn't have a lot That's of time. That's fine. Yeah, I'm coming with you. Come what along are you so me? worried about, Thaddeus? If I die, it'll probably be the best thing that happens to me all day. Thank you for listening to Sounds Like Crows. If you like the show, the best thing you can do for us is tell a friend about us or leave us a rating and a review on iTunes. Thaddeus Crow was played by Marshall Sims, who can be found on Twitter at Mr. Malicious One. Abel Crow is played by Isaac Sunstead at Abel the Crow. Ellis Crow is played by Alex Horrell at Alex Horrell. Lucky was portrayed by Cameron Day, who can be found on our patron-exclusive Discord server. Harper Crow was played by Cameron Reed at CJReed211. I'm Caleb Sunstead, your host and Game Master, and I can be found on Twitter at MarshallCaleb. See you next Monday. You never told me. I don't, I don't know anything that's going on around here. That's not the cold kid. That was that other guy from before, right? So who's the old man? Lucky explains the whole story to you. No, he doesn't. No, that's a uh, shitty time to do it. Yeah, uh, but also that's kind of, that's an interesting narrative device where if you say that, 
and the audience doesn't know. Yeah. But yeah, that's that's cool. But you might be right about the timing. Yeah. Hmm. 